relax as much as possible. I know it can be a stressful time interviewing, especially at a company like Microsoft, but trust me, we're just people and we want you to do as best as you can. So if you come in with a clear mind, take a deep breath, have a cup of coffee, you'll do a lot better. So, uh, Enrico, if you're ready, uh, I have prepared a technical question for you. You will yes, be writing sure. a code on this whiteboard. And the question I have for you today is to implement a calculator. Okay. Um, so, what, um, how do you... I have a, quite some questions for you. If that's that's okay. understandable, of course. Uh, so, how do you expect the calculator? So, do you expect like a common line calculator or like an interface for a calculator? Or like, what should be the output? Which programming language do you want me to write? Uh, it's up to you. As long as you can explain it well to me, I think I'll be fine. Okay, okay. Then I go with TypeScript, because I'm most used to TypeScript. You're usually allowed to pick any language you want to solve these problems. Uh, in some cases, of course, for example, if you're working on a compiler team, you might need to know a specific language, but generally speaking, you'll be able to pick whatever language is most comfortable to you. And I highly recommend that you pick the one that is most comfortable to you, because you need to be able to express your ideas as clearly as possible and make sure that your interviewer can understand them. You don't want to be getting bogged down by syntax. Uh, so the core of the calculator is going to be a function to calculate. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm expected to get a string as an input and then like I'll do the calculation and then get the number out. Mm -hmm. um, the numbers are floating point, so it should be like enough. Uh, like I should, I should be able to return like uh, floating results. Um, and then I think I'll need probably a helper function to parse my input. So I'm getting a string and then I'm getting out a number string and number. Um, yeah, so, this, this number, number. yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming that the input I receive from the calculator, uh, like for the calculate function, is a string that is in the format a number, then a space, then some operator, then another space, and then a number. Mm -hmm. I know it's a bit like, um, it's not really covering all the cases, but I just want to start with something simple and then I'll get mm -hmm. to the harder cases. During your interview, you want to think of it more as a conversation. You, you want to be talking with your interviewer and trying to collaborate on your ideas. You notice how Enrico was bouncing his ideas out and Maria was bouncing back about, yes, okay, this makes sense, or uh, yes, this, this assumption, we can go with that, that's fine. Okay, so Enrico, I think I got the idea of your uh, helper function, but what about your core function, the one that's actually supposed to be the trick in your calculator? When your interviewer asks you a technical question, the first thing that you'll want to do is confirm your understanding of the problem. You want to make sure that you've clarified any assumptions that you have and make sure that you've cleared any edge cases or any other considerations that you might need to know. This is really important because when you're actually on the job, you're working with real servers, real production data, you might be dealing with thousands or millions of customers, you want to make sure that you understand what you're trying to do before you go in and just start writing code. Start with a solution that works. Just get something that works start to finish. Again, you can clarify what assumptions you're making and make sure that you point out if you know in advance that there are any error cases that you're not handling or things that you, other considerations that you should be making that you're not making sure you've clarified that with your interviewer first. But getting a function, getting a solution that starts and works with some, some basic input to start with is a great start and you can iterate from there. So Enrico, usually uh, the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes or less, it depends on how the technical part goes, we usually give candidates time to ask questions. So now is your chance to ask me questions you might have. Yeah, yeah so I have a lot of questions, um, but the main one is like, um, what is your working day balance like between real coding, meetings, mm -hmm. so how much do you code versus Mm -hmm. Talk to other people. Yeah, that's something that concerns pretty much every yeah. candidate. So I won't lie to you, the higher you climb the ladder, like the less time you actually spend coding, which some of my colleagues refer as real working. And to be honest, we actually meet a lot, and by a lot, <clears throat> I mean that we don't get into regular meetings, leadership type, but we do kind of talk a lot. Because usually when we decide on something, we gather, by we I mean my team, or just me and my colleague, we just gather to discuss the possible solutions because it's really a seldom case where you actually come up with the solution only by yourself. At the end of the interview, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions to your interviewer. 
It's not necessary to do so, but there are some things that you'll probably want to know because this will be your day-to-day -day for quite some time. So for example, you might ask like in Reboted, how much of your time do you spend coding versus sitting in meetings? So this is something that will vary a lot from person to person and team to team, but it is something that you'll probably want to get a sense of. During the interview, uh, just try to be yourself. I mean, it's understandable that you want to make a good impression, but keep in mind that the people that are interviewing you are potentially going to be your teammates, and we want to make sure that we kind of jive as a culture. Thanks a lot. Bye.